Okay. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. And I think we learned a lot. So let me put this in full screen. Have I, you know, few slides as a like closing, but the last one is the most important one because that will require your contribution. So we come to an end after, you know, five days, uh, as Marcelo and Brian said, we, we listened to some really great talks and we learned a lot from, you know, the tiny mail from different angles. So that's, that's great. So first of all, I want to thank the, the organizers. So Brian, BJ, Marcelo and Jeremy, plus the 15 great speakers that we had this week. So thanks a lot. Again, this would not have been possible without your hard work. Thank you to a number of organizations. So ICTP, Harvard, uh, Barnard College of Columbia University, UNIFE, and then Agimpus. Thanks to, to Sean for giving us this great introduction to, to Agimpus. TinyML Foundation, we had a great talk from, from Pete. Arduino, we had uh, David a couple of days ago. Very interesting application. Looking at a bit of a different view, I would say, of Arduino and, and, and TinyML. And Seed Studio, we had uh, Eric, I think, on the second day, and that was was a great talk. So thanks to all these organizations for their support. So let's talk about opportunities. So what, as I said, the first day. So what next? So I hope that you're now hooked to you know TinyML. You uh, find this new technology as something useful for you, for your students, for your project. So what what can we do next, and how can you continue working with? So one is to join this TinyML Academic Network. I have a map in, in, in later slides. So the easiest way is to send an email to edu at tinyml.org. So um, telling us about your projects, about how you plan to use TinyML for your courses or your projects. And we can kind of take it from there. As you have learned, it's a very dynamic field. So we're also trying to find the best way to, to support this community. Second opportunity happening right now, there's something called AI for Good Challenge. This is launched by the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union. And we had it for the past two years. And it was about low cost weather stations in the past. And now we're going to have one challenge about mosquitoes. So Brian just mentioned mosquitoes. And we're now discussing with the ITU and with a number of other organizations to have a much bigger challenge on mosquito and malaria in some way. So trying to uh, have, you know, even better models. And as Brian said, uh, you know, go out in the field and, and install things and test things, but we're not trying to scale it up. So uh, we have such a great community that, you know, the idea is to work on one specific challenge, one specific SDG, as we call it in the UN system and try to solve it from, I would say, start to end. So from the you know science point of view, from the ML side, from the tiny ML side, and then finally from the kind of practical deployment. So let's say if you have a good model running on your small device, how do you deploy it in the field? You need to have a power source, you need to have a casing. We just heard from Brian that casing is part of the you know environmental pollution in some way. So we need to find the best way to get this solution uh, out in the world. Um, the other one, I think we said that a million times now, we have this Discord channel. So uh, please feel free to uh, you know, join Discord and we can continue the discussion on Discord. Of course, all these interesting chats that we had on Zoom will be gone once we close the Zoom, Zoom room. So uh, in Discord, that you know remains uh, for longer, so feel free to ask questions on Discord. I said we have a network. In fact, this network we started in 2022. And we have now over 50 universities that are part of the network. I think, I mean, after the first phase where we kind of expanded quite quickly, we now need to find a way to maintain this network. So there's different components. So one was the kind of hardware side. So getting equipment out to universities. Don't forget the time of COVID, but that was an additional challenge for us. I think that nowadays hardware is much cheaper than that time. So, but still, I know that for many universities, it is difficult to get devices for a number of reasons. 
Brian mentioned some, I mean, having a credit card is, would be one, you know, uh, customs would be another one and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, we're now thinking about how we can kind of consolidate this network. Um, the other point is that we would like people from the network to work together. So we need to find, you know, ways for people to uh, cooperate. But again, we're going to get back to that on my last slide. Learning and teaching, I think uh, Brian mentioned some of this, but again, uh, a bit more. So if you want to learn more about TinyML, there's a number of resources under tinymledu.org slash learn. And there's uh, resources, some of them are based on uh, EDX or Coursera, some great courses. I think Marcelo mentioned a new course that Sean is giving. Uh, I believe it's quite short, but it's uh, really, really good. And if you want to teach a course on TinyML, we have tinymledu.org slash teach. And there, again, you will find a lot of training material that you can use for your own courses. Again, don't forget, we have this fantastic um, a book that uh, VJ edited, and it's Machine Learning System with TinyML. Again, it's completely open, so you can, of course, read it to learn, but you can also use the content on, on from GitHub to teach your own courses. And slides are coming with the different chapters, so you're also free to reuse that slide for your teaching. So again, a lot of material is available. Don't forget all the uh, trainings we organize are available on the uh, Tiny ML ADU website. So again, slides from this workshop, from previous workshops, are available online and videos as well. Research. So most of you, or I guess all of you are researchers. So there has been a lot going on in terms of research in TinyML. So members of our community have published quite a lot. In fact, again, if you go to the website slash research, you will find all the papers that have been communicated to, uh, to us. Please, if you publish any paper and you want the paper to be you know, widely uh, known. So uh, send us an email again to the same address so, uh, so that we can publish a link on a website. I think we have like about 20 papers now from members of our community. Just to give you some examples of the variety, I just um, posted here some papers. So the first one is from Irene from Rwanda, and it was about uh, using TinyML for a predictive maintenance. So very interesting. She compared two different uh, models using edge impulse and interesting paper. She was using this uh, predictive maintenance in hospitals in Rwanda. Second one is one that we worked together with, with Marcelo and with Moet about classifying mosquito wing beat sound using TinyML. There's, I think, other two papers on the similar uh, topic now, uh, which have been published. There is uh, our friends from uh, from Morocco that they published like kind of a, a literature review, a survey on TinyML for environmental problems. Another paper from Brazil about coffee disease classification, again, just as examples. And one paper about e-health, so about using TinyML for uh, atrial fibrillation detection. So we have not covered much about e-health, but that's a very interesting field and there's some really, really good papers in, in this subject. There is one really good uh, GitHub link from a guy, I guess, from Ghana or Nigeria, I don't remember, but he's posting a lot of links to papers and to material uh, on GitHub. So again, if you're looking for papers, this is one good uh, source of information. There's also many new call for papers in the field of TinyML. I just learned today about this one, which is a special issue on IEEE design and test about TinyML. So it's quite diverse. It goes from more theoretical to uh, applications. So that is a call for, uh, call for paper that is uh, really good and it's, it's, it's a recent one. So these call for papers come out uh, regularly. Don't forget we have the show and tell. I don't know if Jeremy is, is still online or is he, with his students, but uh, we have this show and tell monthly at the end of the month, the last Thursday of the month. And it is addressed to young researchers, students and practitioners. 
So if you have an idea about you know a tiny man project, even if it's not you know complete as a project, if it's not mature or published, you're very much welcome to present it. Just two examples here, and uh, again you see very uh, diverse application. At that time we had application for uh, respiratory diseases. Again it was COVID time, but then later we had again uh, animal behavior. We heard from from Argentina. We had hand gesture recognition from a um, Algerian from the US, many, many examples, bees. So it's a very, uh, I think, useful way to present your project and to get comments from the community. And this is my last slide. And I really hope we can get some feedback from here, from you, because again, we have been uh, working on this uh, tiny ML community, academic community for the last three years. We have organized uh, many training activities, uh, in person, online, produce you know training material, but it's always good to get feedback from from you, from the community. And so I wrote some points here, but again, it's not complete. You can, you you can add more. So the question is, what do you need more? Should we focus on funding, looking for funding to provide hardware? Is that the major barrier in in your case? Uh, what about books? Do, do you need books? There's, uh, we have seen a couple of books. Gianmarco Jodice presented one on, on Monday. Would it be good to look for funding to ship books? Would that be useful? What about open trading material? Is what we have enough? Or do you need more in different languages or different formats? Or would you be happy having more seminars on specific topics or introductory seminars? So that is something that Jeremy was pointing out, it, it might be hard for people to get started with TinyML. So we, if you think it's interesting, we could have some seminars about you know, getting started and then uh, you, know, you can walk with your own legs you know, later. What about uh, in-person workshops in your country? So we got many, many, many requests for in-person workshops, way too many that we can you know, satisfy. And of course, it's a matter of funding. But is that something we should focus on, these kind of hands-on workshops in, in your own place? Or final one, how should we stay in touch? So we're, we tried Discord, but there's many other ways. We had you know, a mailing list that wasn't that successful. We could think about using Slack, if you're familiar with Slack and you think that that is a good tool. Or we can have you know, a Telegram channel or a WhatsApp. I don't know, we're completely open to your suggestions. So with that, I leave it to you. Feel free to you know, raise your hand or open your mic. And this is a open discussion. Yes, please, like. Um, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks very much, um, uh, Macro and the whole team for the workshop. This was so um, uh, insightful and very, very, very uh, helpful with the current uh, um, uh, project and activity that we are working on with other devices. So it was very new for us to, uh, in fact, to know, uh, um, to know all what we can do with a tiny um, ML and, uh, and specifically uh, with the AI part. And uh, we have a current project also with, uh, with another uh, US um, uh, company um, uh, on the, uh, in fact, on the weather, uh, weather data prediction. And uh, this will be very helpful for the workshop that we have been ongoing with universities in Cameroon, because uh, I spoke with the other people that are inside the workshop uh, and, sp and specifically with the Professor Leon team. And she said, uh, we can uh, make a request um, uh, to, uh, to your organization in order to host an in-person workshop with our different uh, organization that we have in Cameroon and uh, with a different um, university. Because uh, up to now, we have touched already um, uh, 100,000 um, 100, um, students in our country. And uh, we really need uh, to create a, uh, a very big um, awareness about uh, tiny ML machine, machine learning and all those stuff, because we see that no need to have a powerful machine in order to run uh, your machine learning program. You can use uh, the simple um, tiny ML microcontroller then. This will be a very good um, opportunities 
and we want to know how we can proceed in order to uh, conduct an in-person workshop or maybe online workshop with students and uh, with, with different uh, students and researchers in our country because Professor Leontine uh, has uh, many contacts and uh, she's the director of many other universities in Cameroon and uh, she has that request. And uh, we decided to get out to mount uh, the project proposal and uh, see uh, any uh, key of demand that we can uh, propose or answer to any proposal or open a proposal directly um, with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's fine. So one one question, like, what about language? So Cameroon is bilingual, right? English and French. So yes, yes. Uh, most um, uh, we uh, do our workshop. Uh, we mostly do our workshop in English and mm -hmm. also in French. And uh, most students that are working, in fact, uh, most students are really adapted into the English because the programming stuff is mostly in English, and there is no problem for the language barrier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have one vote for in-person hands-on workshops. Okay. Thank Any you. other comment? Who was uh, Jeremy wrote about LinkedIn. That's a very good comment, Jeremy. Uh, so, are are people using LinkedIn for you know for keeping in touch with their colleagues? And do you think LinkedIn would be a good tool for our community? Okay, and there's one vote for LinkedIn, two votes for LinkedIn. Okay. Rodolfo, please. Um, hi, uh, can you listen to me? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay. Um, I think uh, it could be a good idea to make uh, introductory seminars uh, additional to this workshop because I talk about this with my friends. And most of them asked me about uh, how I was learning to uh, to put in practice the tiny ML things I was learning in this workshop, and I was a little bit lost. Uh, right now, I have more links to know more about it, but uh, most of my friends were uh, interested in this, but uh, more they they would like to know more about uh, how to start with this instead of uh, know all the things that I learned this week. So additional introductory courses could be a good idea to expand the community of TinyML, I think. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. So Jeremy, Brian, and, and Marcelo, so how, how long do you think should be an introductory course to get started with TinyML? Is one hour enough, two or three hours? Um. I think that uh, well, to really <laughs> to start maybe uh, maybe a couple of days of three hours each is possible to start to understand what how to to navigate. But I mean, it depends on each one. To start is okay, but people need to put the hands on, do the exercise, and so on, so on, so on. I mean, to really learning. I mean, I think that uh, courses with uh, at least thirty hours, it's uh, it's good. Let's say one week with a few hours a day, you know, even if you take this more days, let's say, you know, in my opinion. Uh, my opinion, um, Edge Impulse, laptop and cell phone, do a vision classification model. Uh, if you really don't know where to start, I just love that startup because quite quickly on the computer, you're seeing your data on your cell phone, you're taking pictures, and you're getting a sense of how more data makes a better model. Um, I agree with Marcelo, a, a full course is the best route. But if you're just like, just wanting a starting point, that vision classification, and then you can jump to a vision FOMO, which is much faster. Uh, and then the sound and the motion ones seem to make more sense if you start with the vision classification. 
I think the I have a question back to your question, Nico, which is <laughs> define introduction, right? Mm -hmm. How how far do you want to get? Um, I think you know in an afternoon you can probably get a sense of what the technology can do. Uh, if you've never seen machine learning, you could introduce like what is machine learning. And then you could say, hey, if you've never really thought about what kinds of computers are, you could introduce big computers, small computers, embedded systems, and then say, hey, and then embedded machine learning or tiny ML is putting machine learning on these little things. And hey, an example that you've seen in your life is Alexa, Siri, Google, you know, that that sort of thing. And you could stop there. And you and you could have a conceptual understanding. If you want to get into the technology, you have to go a little farther. And then my question is, you know, what kind of software background? or hardware background or engineering background that students have. Because I think going back to your constant comment about modular, you know, nature of things, I think, you know, in a week you can get pretty far if people have enough background. If they don't have any background, you probably need more time. Um, because you're gonna have to teach programming and you're gonna have to teach other things like that. So, you know, it's uh I think there's not one answer there. Zacharias, please. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you. Um, I have one quick question. So I I am a postdoc. I'm working on uh, um, degradation mechanisms of uh, photovoltaic, especially the printed module. So I wonder if there is a sensor that can detect the degradation spot on, on a module. For instance, if there is a very large farm, solar cell farms, so that it can detect where is the degradation uh, spot in, in the large farm. So yeah. I would be happy to do that kind of tracking method. Thank you. Sure. So Zakaria, that's a very good question. So I can link you to a colleague in uh, Tunisia, which is working on solar panels. He published a couple of papers. He gave a show and tell speech yeah. Cup, yeah, a couple of months ago, and he published a number of papers on, on this topic. But that raises the issue that maybe we could have on our website something organized by topics as well or interests. So the issue of solar panels and renewable energy and so on came out a couple of times already. So it could be nice to have like names of people so that you can know how you know who to contact. In fact, that's the main reason to have the network, right? So it would be wonderful if you could work with this person and you know work together on research. That's the whole reason to have to have the network. So while we wait for other questions, I will send you the contact information. Yeah, I, I wanted to complement what we have discussed here. It's you know, I mean, like Brian said very well. I mean, uh, introduction is one thing, but I, we we all of us here, we are in a community that works in a focus in de developing, do research. Uh, using the technology for something real and use that for the good for something good for 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 the mankind. Uh, the point is, one of the advice that I gave you, you guys, it, 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 do what you want to start. Let's say go to Coursera. There is a Sean Hemel with the Edge Impulse. That's very simple and very straightforward course that you can do and go and learn what TinMLL is and how you can do start with some examples from like jeremy said from cell phones after that you can you know buy some very cheap uh, device nowadays As marco said nowadays you can you can see you can have a for example a es3 a esp32 cam it's a device that you can buy by a few dollars and you can do real image classification object detection with uh, with the FOMO algorithm etc but anyway when you have started, it's important for you guys to go deeper and understand what's under the hoods. You know, you, you can use platforms like Edge Impulse or whatever to try to help you to, to, to automize, uh, to do things in, in an automatic way. But, you know, you can't, you can't uh, uh, let's say, skip, know a little bit about mathematics, skip about to learn about machine learning, about deep learning, about, uh, you know, frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch, that's our tools to, to running under such kind of thing. Otherwise, we we'll start, we'll start only to press buttons and stay in the hands of companies or some, uh, some platforms that if they move tomorrow, you lose everything. So it's important for us to learn, to, to put hands and, you know, and again, 
develop things and share with others. This community exists because, you know, the people have developed uh, one time, for example, Brian and, and VJ in Harvard, they start a few years ago using people from Google. So they, they published that, they open everything. We took that and, and put that in universities in, in, you know, in Africa and in Asia, in, in, in South America. And uh, we try to get back and return those things, publish papers, publish tutorials, uh, publish books and return in a way, if it's possible, free of charge, open source, so this community can can grow and grow and grow. So I mean, don't take it easy. It's not so, it's not an easy subject, mm -hmm. but it's it's fantastic. It is it's fantastic to learn, you know. So there's two very good questions. So the first one is about the best course platform that we would recommend to get started. So maybe Brian, do, do you have an answer for it? I'm going to give the same, uh, the frustrating answer potentially, which is, hi, what's your background? What, what, what are you trying to learn? Right. I, I think, um, you know, um, Marcelo gives a good point, right? We've done some workshops that are cell phone only edge impulse, much more click, 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 uh, in a good way, right? Like if you have less background, that is the right place to start. You know, if you are, uh, somebody with a computer science background and you know what AI is to begin with, um, you know, you might want to dive straight into like the edX course or something, which is a bit more technical, um, where we have a bunch of collabs that show Python and see, you know, the Arduino files and you get a little bit deeper into what's going on there. Like maybe that's sort of what you want. You might also want to just go and check out some of the semester long Whatever courses. I don't know if they all have today, video at this point, but a, a handful of them do, and that might, um, have some more technical content as well. I, I, I think I would just say like poke around. You know, if you have no CS background at all, um, I think you should go to uh, some of the workshops. We did a workshop, for example, um, with uh, Navajo Tech, um, which was designed for almost no CS background that I ran with with Dylan and BJ um, a couple summers ago. I think that's Edge AI Summer Institute or something. We, we've linked that. That That is all edge and post cell phone based um, with assuming no coding background. So that, that might be something like that. So, so I think, you know, that, that's sort of the answer is there's, there's many answers and it's kind of where you, where are you coming from? And to the modular curriculum thing, we probably should eventually build a nice front end that says, you know, click some things about you and what you know, and then, Hey, here's the set of things that work and pull the modules. Like that's where we'd love to go. Um, but we need a lot more content and we need a lot more organization of the content. So if that's a kind of something that sounds exciting for folks, um, like please do reach out uh, because we'd love to build to something that's a bit more self-service. Uh, we just haven't had the time or resources to do that yet. And there was one question about hardware and I see that Jeremy has replied already. So do you want to comment on that, Jeremy, live? Uh, I think Marcelo mentioned it. I just threw in the links. Um, the Chow ESP32 S3, 14 US dollars as a camera, a microphone, a uh, very capable little device. It does get quite warm when you're, when you're using Wi-Fi. Uh, it has BLE. Um, and then there's SenseCraft. Uh, this is all just get some machine learning working, but it's not giving you the under the hood of how it's doing it so but it, it it is nice just to actually get going on machine learning and so presently that's my favorite device other than it gets a little warm uh the price is definitely good um i started with the arduino portento with a vision shield and we're looking at 200 dollars per device so this is quite an improvement um i'll put a link to my course but that is not an online course. It's an in-person course. My feeling is three or four uh, tech-capable people could probably work through it. But it is supposed to have a teacher in the room helping solve issues. Uh, any other devices out there that our crew can uh, make suggestions for? I use the rack. For example, in Latin America, I suppose in Asia, in Africa, uh, a very cheap device is the ESP32 CAM. 
for example, well, this is a this is an ESP32 GAN. I think this is uh, uh, is less than ten dollars. Okay, it's only camera. Okay, but you can do a lot of work and rework and uh, and uh, you can use. Of course, the ESP32 SE3 that uh, Jeremy comment uh, is much faster because it's is a, is a new is a new CPU. Uh, but uh, it, it's but uh, this is a, a, a possibility you 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 guys can use. And uh, and if you if you if, for example if you work with uh, with uh, movement for example you can have a uh, less than one dollar uh, uh, accelerometer connect to a simple ESP32. So a couple of dollars, you can you can do the job. You know, mm -hmm. that's the point. I mean, I think that you you can be creative and uh, and, and 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 work with with, with that. Let me. <clears throat> I put a link here. For example, I have some tutorials with a focus on ESP32. With the ESP32 cam, with ESP32 connecting external microphone, ESP32 connecting external uh, uh, emu, so you can have on, on, only with a few dollars you can do you can do a lot of a study, develop, uh, uh, understand uh, how you can you can you can work with the TNML in, in those areas: audio, vision, and and movement. You know? So, what do you suggest we do with LinkedIn? So it, it... Apparently, many people like LinkedIn, and that could be a w nice way to share this information or call for papers, next workshops, and get in touch with people. So um, should we have a new group on LinkedIn? Jeremy, or I, I remember you set up a group in July last year, right? Yeah, um, and at school, I don't know if I can find the link. Um, but yeah, there were, it was a private group for the people that, uh, showed in person in, uh, Italy at ICTP. Um, so this is the foundation website. There is, I, yeah, the foundation is the starting point. Let me just see if I can get to it on my cell phone. Talk about and something else. I'll get back to you. Oh, there you go. I have it here. Let me see. This one would be the link. I think some of this presence also can be a conversation with the foundation, which I know wants to start supporting more educational initiatives. And so there might be opportunities to use a bunch of um, mm. their pre-set up uh, resources for that as well. So hopefully we'll all see lots of new and exciting progress over the next uh, couple of months. And yeah. uh, I think in general, the, the thing I want to echo is, is if you all have good ideas, if you have, if you want to be involved, if you have something you want to do, if you're like, Hey, why did nobody do that? Um, reach out, do it. Like we'll accept infinite pull requests and support and you know, whatever, like our, our goal here is just to continue to build community and be helpful. Uh, and so if you, if we're totally missing the boat on something, like, let us know, uh, if you want to be involved, we, we'd love any. Okay. Okay. So, uh, oh, what are their upcoming activities? That's a very good question. Um, we're going to have one workshop in Brazil in July. So many of the speakers that you heard this week, or you know, some of them are coming to Brazil. This activity is organized together with IBM Brazil. I think deadline for submissions is for application, unfortunately, is over. But we are going to have more activities later this year in other places. We're discussing about one activity in Nigeria and the Cameroon request has been going on for some time now. So thinking about that one as well. Of course, again, we have limitation in terms of funding and time, but we try to organize things in the best possible way. So thank you, Jeremy, for posting the link. So should we make this as the official LinkedIn? group yes okay sure. i'll uh Good. i'll, I'll set you up marco as a co uh admin because i just noticed there were 10 people who requested and uh they may have requested months ago so oops yeah, okay we, okay we and can include, work with uh, that yeah include include myself uh jeremy if you possible sure. okay super
Um, well, if there's no more questions, I think we can call it a day and a week. And see you on LinkedIn at this point. <laughs> and have a, have a great weekend all. And again, thank you very much for attending the workshop and we keep in touch. Thanks a lot, folks. What, it was really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.